Hi everybody, today is going to be my most downvoted video ever, probably, because I am going to go over some games that are universally praised, yet I have a negative opinion about. And to demonstrate, let me just show you the first one here. Here's what people have said about the game. Easily one of the most entertaining Super NES titles ever. All those years ago, I still remember every turn. What an amazing game. I was born in 78, I loved this game, played it from morning to night, beat all records over and over again. The game they're talking about is... F-Zero for the Super Nintendo. I bought this game when it first came out in 1991, and I thought it was boring. And I still feel that way today when I go to play it. There just isn't that much going on with the tracks. I feel once I finish a few of them, I've seen all that the game has to offer. I also dislike how erratic the car feels during a jump. It's very easy to land outside the track, which instantly ends the race. It's also not very fun when I'm ricocheting back and forth between two electrified rails. To be honest, I have more fun playing Enduro on the 2600. That game feels more like a fun cross-country trip than a generic loop like F-Zero. By the way, I'm Kevin, and this is a channel where I talk about retro video games. I want to clarify that the games that I show you today, I do not consider overrated. I believe people when they say they love these games. If I declare them overrated, it's like saying that those people's feelings about the games are invalid. These are just games that I have a different opinion about. I'm going to state my case, but I'm not expecting anyone to be convinced by what I say. But hopefully this will be an entertaining video for you. Here's what people have said about this next game. In 1989, with my old classic Game Boy at the age of 10 on long car trips, this game was fun. Still strangely satisfying after like 20 plus years. I have this game. Game. Amazing. So addicted to this game, I play it on the bus on the way to university. The game is... Alleyway, for the original black and white Game Boy. I actually got to play this game before the Game Boy even came out in America. A friend of mine had an imported Game Boy and a copy of this game. Much like F-Zero, I thought the game was boring back in the day, and I still think so today. I know there's only so much you can do with a brick and paddle game like this, but one thing they should have did was add music, like they did with Tetris. There is music during the bonus levels, and those are the best parts of the game. But the majority of the game are not the bonus levels, and so you're sitting there in silence except for the beeps that go back and forth as you hit things. It's a set of very generic sound effects. It takes quite a while to complete a stage. Sometimes the ball gets stuck into a pattern where it keeps bouncing in the same corner over and over again. It's very dull. During that time, I often fantasize about playing other games. I prefer Super Breakout on the 2600. It has the same flaws, but you could play with a paddle controller, which is a lot better than the D-pad. Here's what people have said about this next game. This game is such a pure masterpiece. I could play it forever. The original open world experience, the art, music, level design, and mechanics are all sublime. Perhaps my favorite game of all time. I used to watch my son, who was barely more than a toddler, play this game for hours and hours. Some of the happiest memories of his childhood. Everything about it makes him happy. Well, I hate the crap on their memories, but the game that they're talking about is... The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. I've been playing this game off and on for a couple of months now, and I'm at the point in the game where I need to collect seven crystals from seven palaces. I've managed to get two of them so far. I really enjoy the music in this. I hum it when I'm not playing the game. And I also enjoy some of the gameplay mechanics, such as being able to pick things up and throw them. But I keep running into these what the heck do I do now moments. I get lost and don't know what to do, and I travel back and forth on the very large map looking for solutions. A lot of times I can't get to where I need to go. It reminds me of the cryptic stuff you do in Castlevania 2 on the NES, only this is in a much bigger game. So for me, it's more of a problem than it was in Castlevania 2. There might be other maps in the game, but there's one very large overworld map 
but it's double that size because there's a light world and a dark world on the same map, basically. And there's a lot of items in the inventory. So when you're lost and you can't figure out what to do, there's just so much to go through in order to find the solution. There is a fortune teller who does give you clues, but sometimes they just don't help. I have to run around and exhaust all the possibilities I can think of, and if I don't figure it out, I have to consult a walkthrough or a gameplay video. I'm concerned that before I reach the end of the game, I will have required a walkthrough maybe 10 to 20 times, and that's going to make it feel like I didn't actually beat the game. Also, the walkthroughs for this game are huge. The people that create them may have done things in a different order, so it's kind of hard to sift through the different walkthroughs out there. Let me give you some specific examples. If you haven't played this game, you might want to fast forward through this part because I might spoil something for you. In one part of the game, there's a dude on a stump and he's playing a flute. He disappears before I can get to him, and that's in the light world. When I meet him in the dark world, he doesn't have the flute anymore, and he wants me to find it, and he hands me a shovel. So I naturally assumed that he buried it somewhere, and I need to find it. He gives a clue. He says something about an area where animals gather. I remembered a part of the game in the Lost Woods area where there's some wild animals running around. So I went over to that area of the game and dug everything up and found nothing. I then traveled back to where he was sitting on the stump and dug around that area and I still couldn't find anything. I gave up and consulted a walkthrough. But where I really became stuck is in this palace right here. First of all, I don't enjoy this palace at all because it has many exits and entrances. It keeps bringing you out to the main world and then you go down a hole and you go back into it. So it's quite a maze and it's very easy to get lost in. But what really confounded me was this room right here. I walk into it and I see a handle that's on the wall. I know what that is. I need to pull on it and make something happen. However, I'm being blocked by these gaps in the floor. My conclusion is that I have to come up from the bottom, but when I go to the screen that's below that screen, I can't move upward at all. Once again, I'm being blocked by stuff. I gave up after a while and consulted a walkthrough. The solution was a huge WTF moment for me. I needed to just walk along the edges of the gap in this room. I didn't know I could actually do that. It, visually, it looks impassable. Why have the gaps there at all if I can just walk around them? Anyway, I pulled the handle and it triggered something, but I had no idea what. But I did proceed to get further into the dungeon and then I came to this room where there's just two blocks. I'm under the impression that I need to do something in this room, but I can't figure it out. I tried pushing the blocks in all different directions. By the way, notice that my gems are maxed out. That's how long I've been lost in this game. I've killed so many creatures that I maxed out my money. I'm gonna keep trying to get past this room, but eventually I'm probably gonna have to consult a walkthrough. Another complaint I have is that some of the enemies take a long time to kill, like these mummies. I have a feeling I might have missed a sword upgrade somewhere. I may need to look at a walkthrough to confirm that. By the way, I have played and beaten the first two Zelda games on the NES, and I enjoyed them quite a bit. The second one I've beaten multiple times over the years. At this point though, it's hard to say what my final opinion of Link to the Past will be, but so far it's been unenjoyable to depend on walkthroughs. You might be thinking at this point that I'm doing this video to be controversial and to get views. Well, I do enjoy the views, but I just thought this would be an interesting video. I think people might be afraid to make a video like this because they don't want to go against popular opinion. After all, there are cases where reviewers have been harassed because they gave a good game a bad rating on the rating scale. Hello? So are you the guy that gave Breath of the Wild a 9.9? .9? Yeah, that's me. Well, I didn't like that. <laughs> I'm willing to believe that you have some games of your own that you have played that everyone else likes, but you disliked. If so, let me know in the comments, and I promise I'll protect you.
This next one gets a lot of universal praise. My favorite handheld game ever. The perfect game. The perfect game. And it is... Contra 4 for the DS. I'm a big fan of Contra on the NES and Super Contra on the SNES. I played the heck out of that one during the 1990s. Contra 4 has a lot of the same style as those games, so in theory I should like it, but I don't. And it's mainly due to one thing, actually two things. It has gameplay on two screens simultaneously. This is different from most DS games where one screen is informational and the other is the gameplay. When I'm playing Contra 4, I have to pay attention to both the screens at the same time because enemies on one screen can shoot bullets across to the other screen and they can toss a grenade from one screen to the other. Two screens on top of each other with a gap in the middle, it's just too much real estate to pay attention to. And I end up dying a lot as a result. This setup also causes me to miss the gun power-ups, which are very necessary. They tend to whiz on by the other screen before I have a chance to react. Here's what people say about this next game. One of the best games on Sega ever. Yes, this is my all-time favorite game. A masterpiece. One of the greatest video games ever made. The game they're talking about is... Landstalker on the Genesis. The reason this game is here is because I played it about 10 years ago and I wasn't very impressed with it. There's a problem with the jumping in this game. With the isometric view, it's really hard to land where you want to land. They didn't create a shadow to help you. However, when I started playing the game again to record this video, I started liking it and I didn't want to stop playing it. It seems to be a very good adventure game. I still think the jumping is a problem, and if I remember correctly, the, there's a lot more jumping later on in the game. So it's possible my opinion might change again one day. It doesn't belong on the list today, but I thought it would be cool to leave it in here anyway, just so I can tell you about my reversal on it. The next game was given a 5 out of 5 by both Nintendo Power and GamePro. Both IGN and USA Today named it the game of the year of 2003. Here's what some people have said. I swear I would spend $100 or more if they remastered this. I used to play TF out of this game. The Forgotten Legendary Game. The game is... Beautiful Joe. For the GameCube. This game has a lot going on, and it gives me a headache. There's too many gauges cluttering up the screen, too many flashing effects, boss battles that are too drawn out, and there's a constant change from super fast gameplay to slow motion. I prefer something a little less intensive. Now, I may not be playing it very good in this footage, but I assure you I made an attempt to play all the way through this game many years ago. One thing that does appeal to me about this game is the 2.5 dimensional platforming. I get no joy from the fighting mechanics, and doing those moves on the GameCube controller just totally wore out my hand. This next title is a little weird because I had trouble finding recent comments from people praising this game, but back in 1990, there was a lot of hype surrounding it, especially in gaming magazines like EGM, which gave it all nines. That game is... Strider for the Sega Genesis. I can't remember if I bought it myself or I got it as a gift, but I had this game around its release, and when I started playing it at that time, I thought it was just a bunch of random exploding stuff. As I play it today, my opinion is exactly the same. It's like a convulsion of a video game. The music keeps changing every few seconds, the stage design keeps changing every few seconds, the boss fights are done within a few seconds, the hit detection seems way off, and there's a lot of badly animated sprites. I'm sure there's some people who enjoy this type of game, but it's just too much chaos for me.
Okay, here's what people have said about this next game. I remember when I was a kid, and one particular Friday night, my mom ordered Pizza Hut, and when the pizza showed up at our door, a demo of this game was taped to the top of the box. We had dinner, and then I gave it a whirl. The demo only went through the first couple of scenes, but that weekend, I played the demo about four or five times and was immediately hooked. One of the best games ever made. When I was 11, my mom brought home this game because she asked the guy at the store what a good game was. It changed my life. Thank you, sir, whoever it may be. This game was way ahead of its time. Pound for pound, one of the greatest games of all time. And that game is... Metal Gear Solid for the PS1. To put it simply, I don't like stealth. I'm not good at it, and even when I do eventually get good at it, it's not that enjoyable to me. I get nothing from running around guards and hiding behind things. I'm consistent with this view. When I encounter stealth sections in other video games, those are usually the parts I dislike the most. I also don't like the constant interruptions with the radio. It ruins the immersion for me, and this can be a very immersive game, by the way. But that radio just won't stop. I did beat Metal Gear Solid years ago. I enjoyed the visuals and the storyline, but in the end, the game just didn't have a lasting impact on me. Femia, this is Alaska, you know. Take it easy, I'm grateful. If it weren't for your suit and your shot, I would have turned into a popsicle out there. You might be thinking that I'm just very different from everyone else, and that's why I am showcasing so many games today. I've played thousands of games in my lifetime, and if me and you made a list together of games that we hate and games that we like, we would probably agree about 99% of the time. This video is just the accumulation of every game that I can think of where my opinion differed from everyone else's. So hopefully that makes sense. Here's what people said about this next game. After beating the game well over a hundred times, I always loved watching the ending credits scene. The game was a masterpiece. In those years, this game was something fantastic. Gameplay, graphics, sound effects, background music, all was masterpiece. The game they're talking about is... Donkey Kong Country. And I'm not gonna have a lot to say about this game because I'm not entirely sure why I don't like it. The graphics are obviously phenomenal for the Super Nintendo. I think I don't like it because the stages feel very long and especially that minecart stage. I have so much difficulty with that one and it causes me to lose interest in the game and I end up turning it off, usually. I have made multiple attempts to like this game and uh, at this point I don't think anything's going to change my mind about it. Sorry I couldn't give you any more detail, but this is definitely a game that belongs in this video today. Here's what people have said about this next one. I had this on the Genesis plug and play along with five other games. My mom and I would sit there and play it for hours on end. I would wake up in the middle of the night and she'd be playing and pushing through level after level. Wow, 22 years later and finally saw the ending to this masterpiece. I used to love this game as a kid, probably my best gaming memories. And the game they're talking about is... Kid Chameleon on the Genesis. Unlike Donkey Kong Country, I'm gonna have a lot to say about this one. Uh, the game starts off very well. It's centered around jumping and smashing bricks, so it's much like the beloved Mario games. Also like the Mario games, there's a lot of cool secrets you can find if you explore the levels. To top it off, there's some fun transformations. It's kind of like Altered Beast, only this time it's more like changing costumes, and each costume has a different ability, and those abilities are quite fun. But all that positivity I get from this game starts to drain away as I play through the various stages because I start noticing what I consider bad design decisions and those decisions result in me getting killed. This happens more and more as the game goes on. It eventually gets to the point where I just turn it off. For example, there are times where you have to take a blind leap of faith off the bottom of the screen only to land on an enemy, some spikes, or lava. It happened to me many many times just in capturing this gameplay footage. 
If you hold down on the D-pad, you can move the screen and see what's down below you, but there's a lot of areas where this is not an effective enough tool. There's also teleport pads in this stage that take you backwards for some reason, and that kind of sucks because there's a time limit in this game, and you don't want to be going backward and have to rewalk something you've already seen. I also get visually confused on what I can walk on and what I can go behind and stuff like that. Whoever designed this game loves spikes because they put them everywhere and I'm not a big fan of them. Right here is the end of the stage and I have to get to the flag but I can't figure out how to get to it. It looks like there's a ledge in the lava, so I tried jumping down to that, but that got me killed. I tried jumping across the gap, but that got me killed. As it turns out, I needed to walk through a wall a little bit earlier in the stage. What cements my dislike for this game are the enemy patterns. These leaping hands are annoying, and this enemy that does this huge arching leap is also annoying. In the end, the game just feels unfair. But out of all the games today, this is the one I really want to like. So I will probably keep attempting to play it. Here's what people say about this next game. Epic music, epic gameplay. One of the best games on the Super Nintendo. The game is a masterpiece. One of the best games I've ever played. That game is... Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. It has great graphics, music, and controls, but I just don't like it, and I'm not 100% sure why. I enjoyed the NES Castlevania games, and I loved Symphony of the Night and the Game Boy ones. I finished many of them with 100% completion. It could be that, subconsciously, I wanted this one to be a Metroidvania, which it's not because that's the kind of Castlevania style that I love the most. It could also be that I get a non-Castlevania vibe from it. It has large sprites, and it kind of has a different mood. I haven't been able to beat it, but I've gotten pretty deep within it. Perhaps one day my attitude might change. Here's what people say about this next one. My old man and I beat this game many times. It's my all-time favorite game. He knew every secret in it. Rest in peace. This game has got to be one of the best OSTs out there. This one was Dynamite. I've been playing it recently, and it's extremely addictive, dynamic, and funny. You just can't stop playing. Well, I did stop playing, and that game is... Zombies Ate My Neighbors. I would characterize this game as a fast-paced Toe Jam and Earl, but it's a little too fast-paced for my taste. I die a lot, and it's because the enemies are too numerous, and they respawn too easily. It seems like to do good, you have to do a lot of experimenting with the various items you find along the way, but it's hard to experiment when you got these frantic enemies running around. I would prefer this one to play more like Smash TV, one of my favorite games on the Super Nintendo. I do have appreciation for the horror movie theme, but it's just too frantic of a game for me. People had a lot to say about this next one. There has always been something strangely awesome about this game. This is to date one of the best games ever. One week ago I gave myself a retro night and played it through once again with everything unlocked. I was so damn happy. Great game really. And that game is... Zillion for the Master System. What attracted me to this game was the fact that people were calling it Metroid for the Master System. Since I'm a big fan of the Metroid games, I had to give this one a try, and I played all the way through it, but I don't think it compares good to Metroid at all. The controls are tremendously bad. I've never played a game where jumping over landmines was so hard. The core gameplay mechanic is busting these globe thingies, to find a piece of a code, and when you find enough of the code, you can take down barriers to proceed deeper into the complex. That's pretty much the whole game in a nutshell, and it's just not my definition of fun. You might say that I don't like these games because I suck at them, well, 
I can actually enjoy a game that I'm not good at. Vanishing Point on the Dreamcast has a huge difficulty spike in the middle of the game that I can't get past, but I still like the game. The same goes with Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the Super Nintendo. I love that game, but there's this part on the raft that I have a lot of difficulty with. It's a game that I can never beat, but I still enjoy playing it. And in case you want to know, I have beaten quite a few games in my lifetime. I made this list off the top of my head. I know there's hundreds more that aren't here. But the bottom line is, a lot of games can be difficult, but they can still be fun to play. It just has to do with the game design. Here's what people said about the next game. OMG, how I missed this masterpiece. Best game ever. Played it on the original NES. I just got married and my wife thought this game was weird and disgusting. She was right and I loved every second of it. This game was challenging, creative, funny, and a good time. They don't make them like this anymore. And that game is... on the Super Nintendo. I'll just warn you, if you're experienced at playing this game, what I'm about to show you is going to drive you nuts. <laughs> because I have trouble with the first stage. That's the only footage I'm going to be able to show you. I can't seem to hit hardly anything with the whip. I have trouble killing these crows with it because of their pattern and because of the way the whip is. The overall controls seem very sluggish. And they're even worse when you get to the tires, which are all over the place in this first stage. Then there are spots where I have to deal with the hard to kill crows on top of the tires. So it's combining two things I dislike into one big thing I dislike. I also have trouble killing these dogs without getting damaged. Then there's items throughout the stage that I can't seem to get to. There are two gun refills here above this chain and I can't find any way to get to them. I hit all the buttons on the controller and I just don't get it. <laughs> there's also these blue things here and I have trouble getting all of those as well. I feel like I'm just missing something. Maybe these things are here to tease you or something, but I find this stage just off-putting and it gives me the impression that I'm going to have a terrible time playing through the game. If I'm having this much trouble in the first stage. Maybe one day I'll give the Genesis version a try because it's supposed to be better than this one from what I read. Here's what people said about the next game. I love this game. I had it on the Commodore 64 and I used to play it over and over again for hours. Great memories. I had this game day one back in the day. It's so epic in every way. This is one of the best games on the Mega Drive slash Genesis. No wonder it sells for pretty decent money now. And that game is... Midnight Resistance for the Genesis. As soon as I play this game, I instantly compare it to Contra because I've played a lot of Contra. And this game doesn't come close to replicating the experience of Contra, in my opinion. The controls are poorly designed and delayed, making it hard to react to some of the quick movements of the enemies. I think Contra just spoiled me and that's why I don't like this game. Sorry I don't have more to say about it. Here's what people said about this next one. It's honestly my favorite pinball game. Damn crazy nostalgia brings me back to countless nights playing this under the covers so my mom didn't look in my room and see me playing. And the game is... Metroid Prime Pinball for the DS. Years ago, I sat down and played through every single Metroid game, including this one, and I just didn't enjoy it. And I was glad when I got all the way through it. When I came back to it to capture this video, I started enjoying the game, and I totally changed my mind about it. The pinball physics feel fantastic, and the music and atmosphere are faithfully pulled from the Prime Universe. Maybe when I first played it, I was just mad because they were using the Metroid IP for a pinball game, and I thought that maybe that was a waste. But judging it just as a pinball game, it's an excellent pinball game. And even though it doesn't belong in this video, I just wanted to share my experience about it. Skin. 
I want to take a minute to talk about Popeye and Donkey Kong for the NES. These are old arcade games released in the early days in the NES, and they are very enjoyable to play even today. But I hear people say that they're excellent arcade ports, and I don't agree with that statement. Donkey Kong is missing an entire stage, and Popeye is missing some stuff too, including a lady who throws bottles at you. Maybe Nintendo doesn't want kids throwing bottles at each other? I'm not sure. I do realize that these are ports from the early Famicom days, but the system definitely had the power to do a lot more. I wish they would have gone in and done an enhanced version later on in the life of the NES. But anyway, I think about those missing elements every time I play these games, so I just thought I would share that with you today. Here's what people say about this next game. I love this franchise. This was one of my favorite games growing up. The game is... Advance Wars for the Game Boy Advance. Everything I have to say about this game also applies to Advance Wars 2. I played through and beat both of those games. But as someone who plays a lot of these games that are turn-based and on a grid, I would not recommend Advance Wars 1 and 2. There's an excessive amount of talking and hand-holding, and for me that severely dampens the experience. Maybe Nintendo was targeting people who have never played these types of games before and wanted to teach them how to play Play, but I suggest heading straight to War Song or Shining Force, both on the Genesis, or Iron Storm on the Saturn. As soon as you start playing the games, you learn it very fast, and those games are strategically deeper and more fulfilling, in my opinion. I'm down to the last game, and this is what people have said about it. The best 8-bit RPG. Masterpiece. The best RPG. One of the best games I've ever played in history. The game they're talking about is... Fan fantasy... <clears throat> Fantasy, <clears throat> fantasy Star for the Master System. Now, have I gone mad? I may have, but I can tell you I played through this game about seven years ago, and I just wasn't enthusiastic about it. I realize everything this game was doing was well ahead of its time, but I don't think that makes it fun to play nowadays. I was never too keen on the amount of enemy encounters. A lot of people rave about the 3D dungeons, but I feel they're the weakest part of the game. Not the way they look, just the way they play. Every hallway looks the same. It's too easy to get turned around and become lost. There's no end game maps, so I tried drawing them on paper, but that was very time consuming because of how many corners there are that you have to turn. It's easy to get mixed up even when you're mapping it out on paper. For what it's worth, I did play through Fantasy Star 2 and I rather enjoyed it. I hope you found this video entertaining. If you want to see some games that I love on some of these systems, I did a top 10 Sega Genesis game list that's on the left, and I also did one on the NES, and that's on the right side of the screen in front of you. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody.